Hey guys, today we're going to explore Gravit Designer. This is free software, vector editor, something like Adobe Illustrator. It will run directly in your web browser. So you can work with it on any device, like even Chrome, Chrome laptop. You can work on it on your Mac, Windows, even iPads. Okay, I tested it out, it works on iPad as well. The downside is there are some features, functions hidden behind something called Gravit Designer Pro. There's some paywall for the premium account, but most of tools are available for free. So it's really great, great software to learn more about vector graphic, especially for students study online from home when you need to finish the course. Maybe your instructor is using Adobe Illustrator but this is quite expensive software, so the Gravity Designer is a great alternative for that. All right, so I'm here on the website, designer.io, and I'm going to click Start Now. It's loading now, let's give it a moment. And here it is. We got login screen. You will need to create a free account. As you can see, they also try to advertise this pro edition, give us some additional stuff. The good thing about this account based login is that we will have some cloud storage for free for us to keep our files online. As you may know, vector graphic is really light, so we can keep a lot of files there for free in the built in cloud storage. That's good. So we can access our same project from multiple devices, multiple computers. All right, I already got the account, so I will simply log in. All right, I just log in, and again, they try to advertise with this premium feature. I will click here, continue with Gravity Designer free. And here we are, we can select the size of our artboard. Let's pick something. Come on, like A4 paper. All right, I'm using Safari now. They recommend me to use Chrome or Firefox. Got it. All right, and here I am inside Gravity Designer running directly in the web browser. As you can see, the first thing I want to change is the theme. I hate white interfaces. So I go to Edit, Settings, and now I can change to Dark. All right, I can also explore other settings. What do we have here? All right, seems all right. We can click Save Changes, and here it is, Dark Interface. I got this A4 document, as you can see, in the inspector on the right side. So, the layout of the software. We got all our tools at the top, not on the left, like in Adobe Illustrator, at the top. On the left, we got our layers, libraries, symbols, pages, on the right, we got inspector showing us properties, details of currently selected shape. And in this case, the whole page. All right, this is this kind of new style of making layouts for designer programs. You can see something similar in Figma, for example. It's really useful, got very high usability in my opinion. And seems like many companies are shifting to it. We don't put the layers over here any longer. We give them the space on the left side so we can see more layers. We don't put tools over here. We can put them at the top so they are really accessible with additional windows tabs here. All right, so let's start. First, we can modify the color of the page over here. As you can see, easy to do. We can also resize it now. Even after we create document, we can change it to A3 now and it's much bigger. All right, we can even rotate that. Here it is. Usually with graphic software, you will need to zoom in and out quite often. You can use tools at the top. We got this plus minus thing. If you got no more keyboard, you can use a shortcut. This is command plus on Mac, command minus to zoom out. And on Windows will be control plus, control minus. Very handy. Even you are hobbyist amateur, I strongly recommend to just memorize this one shortcut combination. Command plus, command minus. All right, we got this hand tool. So if you zoom in, you don't want to zoom out all the time. You got this hand tool, you can just 
kind of drag the camera around so you can see the whole project, different part of your document. This is a separate tool here, but if you got other tools like this one and you want to quickly jump to it just for a moment, you can also hold spacebar on your keyboard. See that? Only when I hold it down, I got this hand tool. I release and I'm back to my previous tool. All right. So that's something for navigation to smooth our navigation around the document. If you click on this icon, fit all, you will see the whole artboard like this. You can also use you can also use command or control zero like this. All right, same function. So let's get started. Let's create a shape. We got multiple shapes here to pick from ellipse. Now I can draw ellipse with my mouse, just hold down. And if I need perfect circle, I need to hold down shift like this. Here it is. Now my inspector change. I got properties of this selected shape. You see that when I click on the page, nothing. When I click on the shape again, I got properties of this shape. So I can change the fill color. Maybe like this. All right. We can rescale it. We can just drag the corner. And again, if you need to keep it as perfect circle, hold shift. All right. So we got one shape here with fill color. We can add border, just click here on the plus, and here is our border. Border is the stroke around the shape. We can make it thicker. We can modify the color. And there are some additional, more advanced properties as well. If you click on this one, there is some additional stuff. Like you can make it as a dash line. Can adjust the gap and you got some kind of dash. You can end your line with the circular ending. You can put it in the middle or outside the shape as well. All right, so there are some properties to it. Currently, I'm going to kick it out. So I'll click on this bin icon and my stroke is gone. And the third group is the one that can give us some special effect. So we got effects, we got blur at the top. Click the little plus over here and the blur is applied. Keep in mind, when you apply effect to your shape, it's not, not vector graphic any longer, all right? So if you export this as SVG, PDF with effect on it, this one element with effect on it will be rasterized, okay? Keep it in mind, even if I decide, oh, you know what? I need to keep it as vector, so I will reduce the blur to zero, and now I'm going to export and save as PDF. So when we open that, this shape will be still a raster even there's zero pixel blur because i keep this layer on this effect on sorry so if i want to turn this element back to vector i need to kick this out completely by clicking this remove effect and now again if i export this file now this would be perfect vector circle all right so we got a few more like drop shadows inner shadows simple stuff all right let's keep going a few more shapes and go again i pick shape tool now, new shape, let's build some kind of emoji here. As you can see, I got new shape in my layer panel. Now I can duplicate this simply by holding Alt on Windows or Option on Mac, hold it down and then you can drag the shape out. Instead of moving the shape, you will make a duplicate by holding Option key on Mac. All right, let's make one more copy here, scale it up. I want to cut out the part of the shape only, so I'm going to use other shape like rectangle. So I can cut out the top of this shape, all right? Using one shape to make a new shape. So I can select this one and this one together, holding shift, or you can use layer panel as well, both. And now we got some kind of geometry, geometry panel here, something like pathfinding in Adobe Illustrator, we can subtract. So the top shape, cut out the bottom one. As you can see, this is still compound shape. I can still make changes here if I really want to. All right, but if you're sure that you don't want to make any more changes in that, you want to turn this into one shape now, click here. 
at the top, convert to path, and you got new shape over here. We create a new shape by combining two shapes together. All right, now we can modify the color. What next? Maybe I will make a duplicate of that. I can also use very common shortcut like command C or command V, control C, control V, and I got copy exactly in the same position. I can drag it out. I'm going to use rectangle tool here white color and I want to keep only the common area so the one that is overlapping for both shapes again here we're going to our create compound shape tool and we can intersect this time and I will keep only this common area all right I will convert that to curves as well it's here. Now I can modify the color using the inspector on the right side of the screen. And here it is. Alright, we're building some little emoji here. Let's change the fill color of it to be gradient. We got fill color over here. If you click on the fill color, you will see that now we're using classic fill color, just one solid color. We can open that. And under this, we got some gradients to pick from. Linear gradient like a line, smooth transition from one color to another. We can also change to radial, like circular. All right, this one is cool. So I can click now on this outside point and I will be able to modify this color outside. And now I click on the inside point and I can modify the color inside. All right, not bad. So, so far I use shape tool so let's do something using pen tool pen tool is like the most powerful tool in any vector editor it's allow us to create custom shapes we can simply click around and we're building this custom shape if you simply click you will make a straight line between two points all right let me delete that i'm going to hit delete on my keyboard but when you use pen tool and you click and drag you will get these control points that will allow you to make the line curvy all right and this way we can create some kind of custom shape we can adjust the fill color of course we can kick out the border currently i got a little border here you cannot see it let's zoom in This little border, I don't need that. I will kick this out. All right, and I create this custom shape. It's not really beautiful, but don't worry. Good thing about vector graphic is we can always modify the curve later on. So let's place it here. And just using the normal pointer tool is something like selection together with modify tool. We can scale up. All right, a little hat here. Now I'm going to open this panel and under this pointer I can see sub-select. This is something like direct selection. Instead of changing the whole shape, I going to I can, now I can just select one point in it. You see? That's really powerful. And even modify the curve over here. I can change the round point into sharp one as well. And go back to the round. If you want to modify only one side, you can do that as well. Now I can modify it separately, like this. Very useful, especially for people like me that do a lot of mistakes and they I need to go back and use this sub select tool, direct select tool to fix my curve that I make with pen tool. All right, so even my pen tool was not perfect now. Thanks to this sub-select, I'm able to modify and create some kind of cap for this little emoji guy. All right, I think that's enough for the first tutorial in our Gravi Designer. So Gravi Designer is a free vector editor similar to Adobe Illustrator. So far, we didn't make any 
like pay function and the paywall. So I think it's good enough for the free tool. You can start your adventure with graphic design, with vector design. It's really powerful tool, quite stable for this web app. So I highly recommend this one. If you cannot use the professional one, the paid one, like Adobe Illustrator or Affinity Designer, pick this one. It's a great start. All right, guys, thank you for today. And please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel so you can see more tutorial tutorials like this one. All right, see you in the next one. Bye.